Greetings everyone. There's a job for the state today. Employment Security Program Assistant. Wow, so Employment Security. What's that? Uh, someone to kind of put the plug in the uh, drain at the uh, bottom of the swamp. <laughs> Sorry everybody. It's just kind of a, a funny morning, a funny day. Uh, last night was a wildly funny night. I love their sort of little, um, you know, fake kind of mock weird protests. We're going to shut down the state. Remember last night we were over, uh, sorry everybody, <laughs> last night we were over here where they were going to shut down the state, which was already shut down. It was Memorial Day evening. We were basically going into Memorial Day Monday night when everyone is tired and they've completely, you know, had enough of everything. So they were shutting down a freeway that was essentially shut down. And it's interesting. I don't know if I've told anyone this or not. I had asthma as a child and we lived in L.A. My dad was a New AG minister, unity minister in L.A. in the 60s. My asthma was so bad he had to transfer before I died, you know, and I really miss the nights on Malibu when... Uh, that was the only place I could breathe, and it was fun sitting on the beach. But we moved to Atlanta, Georgia, and my father, being a minister, knew Martin Luther King, who was also a minister, and Martin Luther King was shot and killed during the time we were there. We did go to the march, and um, I can maybe discuss that in another video, but it all kind of came to me last night and I was rifling around looking for something. Maybe I threw it away in a purge, but it was a daily Olympian. Um, it was a state worker protest and they all had on matching t-shirts uh, to be in solidarity, shall we say, with one another. Um, and they were just like this hideous bright green and it had lime green letters and they all stood in the rotunda and they all looked rotund um, in the main capitol building and what they did for their protest was fast for lunch to skip lunch and it was an amazing photograph because everyone in the photograph was just completely rotund in the rotunda you know screaming they're not going to eat lunch you know, as if they're Gandhi, right? As if they're Northern Irish, you know, um, fasters, right? Who are going to waste away till their death, right? And I called the Daily O, I saw the name of the um, journalist and I called her and said, this is the funniest, you know, mockery I've ever seen of real protests. This is hilarious. And everyone looks like they, you know, should go on one of those, you know, uh, great biggest loser, you know, uh, shows right now, they should all sign up. And she said, she laughed and said, you know, it was really hard to get the photograph because most of them had candy bars and were eating candy bars, snicker bars and stuff that they could have in their hands while waiting for the photograph. And then she said they lied. They all went and had lunch anyway. It was only a photo op. And she was so glad I called. So that was interesting. Now, the reason I stopped the pick here was because someone said, that's the boss. There's the boss, the one running the whole show. <clears throat> and I thought, wow, you know, that's interesting. You know, like, was Martin Luther King running the show? Like, was there someone behind him? Like, I just sitting there, you know, just kicking back while you've got, you know, so-and-so, you know, sprawled out at the uh, freeway entrance there in case someone, you know, going from uh, Seattle visiting grandma back to Portland, you know, can't get gas, you know, or whatever. Uh, but yeah, someone yelled uh, that that's the boss. 
So that was interesting to um, see. And it also was interesting just to hear the word, that's the boss, because there's a really good YouTube of a man that was a Jehovah Witness, grew up in it, left, um, you know, left it completely, you know, um, he joined the army, which I think they don't do. I think they're maybe CO or something. He didn't become a derelict or anything, but he just kind of went into the world and came back in really pristine shape ended up rejoining, you know, kind of going to a Jehovah Witness church because he was in a giant city like LA or something. And they asked him to be a bodyguard for a giant Jehovah Witness um, sort of revival that was going to happen and to be a bodyguard up front, like a stage, you know, on the stage bodyguard. And he was like, yeah, like, you know, he'd love to do that. That was a real honor for him. And so I wonder who she's texting. And so then we, um, so then he went, he showed up early, of course, before there were any people there because he was going to be this bodyguard, just like they're singing Kumbaya or something and clapping. It kind of looks like a little nursery school thing. I did see someone say it doesn't make them look really bright, does it? Uh, so, um, where were we? Oh, yes. So this, um, um, wow, this guy looks like someone else from a whole other thing. So at this, um, particular Jehovah Witness, uh, giant function that he was at super, super early, the, um, the, the head guy, it turned out, was like in the back. And, you know, it was a long story about how he went, you know, into this giant thing and there was no one around and, you know, going through the bleachers and eventually going down a hallway where he was hearing someone like swearing and they sounded like Ed Asner, you know, just, oh, you know, um, and he smelled cigar smoke. And it turned out that this was the person who ran the Jehovah Witnesses, just like, you know, the Wizard of Oz or something, you know, the guy behind the curtain, you know, and it's just like this guy with a cigar, you know, and everything just running the show. And it completely just, you know, totally freaked this guy out. And uh, just to see, wow, you know, the, the curtain behind the curtain behind the curtain. Oi, she's got poils. Zelda, Zelda, I want poils. <laughs> it's Kleichi wearing poils. Oi. And then, um, yeah, so it's always interesting to note. So that woman, they were saying, you know, she was, you know, behind, she was behind the scenes. She's the boss. You know, okay, so we've got our little sideline crowd here and then now this was interesting this was of interest right who were the ones sitting who were the ones sitting there on the road and there we've got him there we've got the preacher man and it's just weird I mean I was in the Martin Luther King March sometimes I feel like Forrest Gump it's like I've done nothing but I've been in some rather extraordinary um, weird places and um, so here I'm just typing in something here the Martin Luther King March in Atlanta and my mother was asking me do you have pics from that because she lost her pics and I never really had them I think she's just got one but um, you know, it's kind of a wild story for another day but I was um, I don't know. It's an intense story. I got lost in the crowd. Um, I got lost in the crowd and I was like really little and I just saw knees. I just saw people's knees and I'm not sure if I'm honing in on the right one or not there. There we have the funeral and Someone did note that I was lost and um, scooped me up after maybe about five or ten minutes and weirdly put, you know, he put me on his shoulders so I could look out and 
find my parents who were up. They were up. They were forward about maybe five or six rows. And when he got to my parents, my mother like swooned and just completely like almost passed out because it was it was Robert Kennedy and that was whose shoulders I rode on and it was distressing then and will always be distressing to this day that that he was that he was killed um, he was a really nice man and he was helping me find my parents at a really sad time when he had lost someone really close to him and that was a march that needed to happen that was a march that had to happen that not enough people went to my father always told me the creepiest thing about that day was going home you know we lived in some kind of like you know white neighborhood i guess there and everyone was just home barbecuing as if nothing had happened and here there's all this historic footage we see the martin luther king march you just assume all of Atlanta was caught up with it. And, you know, to this day, it's still something where I'd never seen so many kind of people in my life, but it was still within definitely, you know, a finite, a finite um, radius. And so this just seemed kind of, you know, like, wow, you know, we're talking about a time when things were hard, really hard. And you know, maybe there's something I'm not seeing. And if I'm not, leave it in the comment section, please. You know, um, so this just felt kind of like a mockery of things, you know. They're not going out during some kind of dangerous time, right? Stopping the shirkers from getting to shirk, you know. They're there on Memorial Day, Memorial Day evening when everyone is completely bloated and passed out upon their couches, their beds, their floors, you know, they've, you know, long ago fallen off the bar stools. And, you know, there wasn't even anyone like on the on the freeway. And so that was just funny. And then he acted so sheepish, like I was shocked when I went around. And he's like, you know, oops, you know, and I just thought that was odd, too. You know, it was just very strange. And um, he just kind of turned away from me and I thought that was odd too I thought oh he's standing up he's gonna want to talk you know because my father was a minister and he was always like talking he even like we he was always flying around and he was on CNN even sometimes like back in the um 80s when he was he got off a plane once from Moscow when uh, Chernobyl happened, you know, different things. And they'd say, you know, how do you feel about this? So I really thought this guy was going to get up and, you know, talk to me. And instead, he just, you know, turned his back on me. He basically mooned me. <laughs> so that was sort of funny, too. So I don't know if it was like the elites were like, um, you know, back at the telephone pole and that this guy was the puppet or, you know, who, who is the puppet of this show? Who's paying them? What is the black armband for? Why Memorial Day? Why when there's no traffic? Why shut something down that is ostensibly down? Do you see any cars trying to get through anywhere? There were no cars that were ever even backed up. You know, I was like the only car out there, you know, kind of zipping around pretty much. It was pretty funny, pretty funny. Um, so once again, please, please tell me <laughs> what this is about. It's just more distraction, isn't it? And yes, there are poor people here. Yes, it's terrible. You know, we see veterans on the street every day and we see... You know, shirkers had just got off the plane from somewhere and got driven, you know, straight to the Jaguar store and given an executive, you know, position and a call, national call for a moral revival. All righty, you guys. Take good care. <laughs> Much love to you all.
Bye-bye.